as you know, Harry Tugman was and is the Underground Railroad. She freed several hundred slaves. And each time she was supposed to go into a community to deliver the slaves, they would sing that song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. They really weren't talking about a chariot. They were talking about Harriet. They were saying, Harriet is coming to take us home. And then they would, once they all gathered and they saw Harriet coming, then once they began to leave, they would say, Wait in the water. saying this to number one to tell the people to stay low, stay in the water, because the good dogs could not pick up your tracks in the water, and God would muddy the water so the tracks wouldn't be left. And this is where they were on their way to freedom. One other thing about Harriet, if you got on her train, there were no turning back. Once you were there, you were there. You could not turn back. If you decided that you wanted to turn back, she always carried a pistol. And she would shoot you right on the spot to make sure that you were dead. Because you were not going to be caught by the slave traders and, and gotten information about where the train was going. Harriet was able to disguise herself this is why she lasted so long. The slave calls her Moses. So actually they were looking for this big, big man when actually she was a little tiny woman who would sometimes dis disguise herself as a child, a little girl, or, or maybe a little boy, or maybe an old woman. But she was a wise woman and she took many, many slaves to freedom. And that's our little story today about Harriet Tugman. And we're going to go to the next slide. Now, a lot of you have seen this figurine. This is a figurine that once the slaves were on their way going through the Underground Railroad, they had many signs and there were many people. This figurine even carried us through Jim Crow. You know, this figurine was to, de uh, to demean the black man, to bring him down, to make him seem or look as if he was so humble that he would almost, he was afraid to stand up straight. But if you watch the lantern that's in his hand, this is called a hitching post. This was a hitching post. And the hitching post was out front, and a hitching post is what you hitch the horses to. Well, the slaves and the abolitionists, they used the hitching post as a guide. And if you saw a hitching post that had a lamp, and if the lamp was lit and there was light from the lamp, that meant that that was a safe haven for slaves. Or even in Jim Crow, there was a safe haven for runaways. The next slide we're going to talk about, now we're coming into what I'm really here about today, Goldsboro. Goldsboro, an American story. Goldsboro was one of the first all black cities incorporated in the state of Florida and in the United States, next to Eatonville, Eatonville, Florida, which is number one. The same, some of the same, uh, some of the same pioneers that incorporated Goldsboro also incorporated Eatonville. They were like relatives, Mr. Joe Clark and his brother William Clark. William Clark was one of the founders of Goldsboro and his brother one of the founders of Eatonville. And Goldsboro was incorporated in 19, 
1889 as an all-black city. And it was a thriving black city. They had their own post office. We have here the certificate from the post office general that says, uh, Goldsboro, that the building in Goldsboro on 13th Street was and, and to be a United States post office. They also had over here the land where the post office was sitting. We have here the land where the post office was sitting. And if you notice, this land was in Orange County, which meant that Goldsboro, when it was incorporated, was part of Orange County and not part of Seminole County because Seminole County had not been incorporated at the time. Seminole County was incorporated in 1913, which was a couple of years ago they had their 100th anniversary. And what happened to, how did the demise of Goldsboro come about is a question that I have a lot of people to ask. This demise came about because Sanford, which was a, 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 about three or four years older than Goldsboro, Sanford wanted to expand. Sanford could not expand to the east because of the river, to the north because of the river, couldn't expand to the west because of Goldsboro, and couldn't expand to the south because of another city called Sanford Heights. So, Mr. Forrest Lake, who at the time was a representative in, in Tallahassee and who had also been the mayor of Sanford, decided, well, we need to go and get this land that we need to expand. Rather than to jump over Goldsboro, they decided to go to Tallahassee and dismantle the Goldsboro Charter. Although the poor people of Goldsboro begged, please don't take our charter. Please don't take our charter. We need our charter. We want our charter. But Mr. Forrest Lake would not hear that. So he went to Tallahassee, and he, in one day, uh, dismantled the Sanford Charter, charter the Goldsboro Charter, and the Sanford Heights Charter. And three days later, he came back with one charter called the Sanford. And that's what happened to Goldsboro in 1911. Mr. Forrest Lake dismantled the Goldsboro Charter. All of the streets in Goldsboro was named after the founders of Goldsboro. The streets was named after the founders so that the history could go on. But once, this, once Sanford, Goldsboro became part of Sanford, they dropped the names on the streets from the founders' name names to numbers. All the streets were given numbers. And one of the streets that were given a number was called 13th Street, which, and another one was called Lake Avenue. All was given numbers except Lake, Lake Avenue, who was named after Mr. Forrest Lake, who was the one that dismantled the charter. And, but before Lake Avenue, it was Clark Avenue, who was named after Mr. William Clark, who was one of the founders of Goldsboro. These are some of the pioneers of Goldsboro. We have, um, the picture's got up. In the middle, we have the Boykins. Mr. Boykin was the first postmaster of the post office, and when he died, his wife became postmistress. And after they took the charter, they left owing several hundred dollars to the people of Goldsboro. We have the original list of all the money, monies that were owed to the people of Goldsboro. They also left owing the city of Goldsboro over $10,000 that the city of Sanford never paid. Nor did the city of Sanford ever pay the money that they owed the individuals of Goldsboro. I have here a lawsuit. This lawsuit is filed, still filed, 
in the Supreme Court in Tallahassee, Florida Supreme Court in Tallahassee. This is a lawsuit where the citizens of, of Goldsboro, led by Ms. Rose Boykin, uh, was suing the city of Sanford. And for 40 years, they, they uh, pursued the lawsuit. And after 40 years, this letter from, from attorney Horace Hill told them that they would never be paid the money that Sanford owed them. And as of today, Sanford has never repaid the money to the city of Goldsboro. Or now we must say the community of Goldsboro. What was it like living in Goldsboro? Back in the early 18, back in the early 1900s. What was the education of Goldsboro? Goldsboro had its own school, even when it was part of Orange County. In 1910, they built Goldsboro Elementary School. In 1926, Croom's Academy was built. Um, this is a picture of Croom's Academy here. Now, in 1970, the consent decree came down from the state of Florida saying that all schools in the state of Florida had to be integrated, which brought a lot of sadness to, uh, to Sanford and to Goldsboro because the two schools that we had in Goldsboro was in the heart of Goldsboro, which was all black schools. That meant that the children, the black children at that school would be, that was attending that school would be bussed out. And the white children at Seminole High, some of them would be bussed into the community of Goldsboro, which had never happened. And they didn't know how to handle the situation. So they were going to take the easy way out. It was never said whether it was the Ku Klux Klan or whether it was just three white men that decided in this picture here that they were going to burn down the school. The thought was, we'll burn down the school and our children won't have to tend crooms. Our children won't have to go into the black community. But although they burned the main building down, there was still here a wing of the side of the building that was saved. So crooms were able to continue on a double session and the school was never closed. Well, in 1983, the county still decided that they were going to close both schools, both the elementary school and the high school, and bust the children out to other schools. So the citizens of Goldsboro got together and said, no, we've got to fight for our school. Because unless we have a school in our community, the community will surely fall. The community will surely uh, deteriorate without school. So the citizens gathered themselves and called themselves the concerned citizens of Goldsboro. And they sued the Seminole County School Board. The lawsuit was called McKenzie versus Seminole County School Board. There were five um, there were five plaintiffs on the lawsuit. Uh, the Seminole County, I mean, Goldsboro community won the lawsuit. And in the lawsuit it said that Crooms Academy had to stay open and it would never close unless it was brought back to court. And today, the high school that was built in 1921 is still standing it's a school of technology, one of the best schools in the state of Florida. Goldsboro Elementary now is a magnet school. It has been, the whole school has been revamped and re, um, um, the, the, the curriculum has been revised and all, and it is one of the uh, best uh, science magnet schools in the county. Now we talk about housing in Goldsboro. What was the housing like in Goldsboro? These are early Goldsboro pictures. 
This is the picture of um, the post office that was the post office. A house here is a picture of a house that was in Goldsboro before HUD stepped in and said that um, they were going to build housing for the people of Goldsboro. Uh, the people of Goldsboro at the time, during the time this house was here, and this house was here, had no indoor toilets, no running water, um, no conveniences that were inside the house. The houses were poorly built. In other words, they were almost like shanties. They were shanties. HUD came in in the late 40s, early 50s, and built what they call William Clark Court and Castle Brewer Court, which the people of Goldsboro would call for over 50 years would call the projects, the projects in Sanford. The projects are gone now. They're not in Sanford anymore. As a matter of fact, William Clark Court has been torn down. They only got one more uh, housing project tear down. There were five housing projects in Sanford, which made Sanford a city that did not pro uh, progress very well because of the housing projects. Because it's my understanding that all the land that these housing projects sat on, HUD did not pay taxes, so the city could not really, um, could not really uh, get any revenue from the HUD houses or the projects. Businesses in Goldsboro. Goldsboro had its own businesses up until the integration of schools. There were service stations in Goldsboro. This is Mr. John Daniels. There, as a matter of fact, there were five service stations in Goldsboro uh, that sold gas, that did complete um, maintenance work, oil changes, and everything on your cars. There were also barbershops and beauty shops all along Goldsboro, all along the um, 13th Street as they were called back then. There were also, this is a picture of Mr. Jim Green. Mr. Grim G, uh, Jim Green had a barber shop in Sanford, one of the first barber shops. He cut hair in this chair from up until 1946. After 1946, his daughter, and this is out in front of their shop, his daughter Ezell took, the, took over the barber shop and cut hair in the barber shop until the year 2000. And another problem that we had in San was just like any other city in the South, during the Jim Crow days and during the early days, we also had the separate, supposed to have been separate, but equal in Sanford. The schools were separate. We had separate water fountains. We had separate bathrooms. We had separate um, entertainment places. We had separate pools. We had separate everything. So you had the colored over here and the white over here. And this went on for a long time in Sanford, like most, most uh, cities in the South. This is maybe what some living would have looked like in Goldsboro in the early 1900s, all the way up to, all the way up to, I say, the 60s and the 70s, if you lived in a house. And if you notice, we have the tin tub in the middle. And if you know anything about history and the tin tub, the tin tub was used for a whole lot of things. Number one, we took a bath in the tin tub. Number two, we would wash our clothes in the tin tub. And number three, we would uh, wash our vegetables in the tin tub. So the tin tub was used for a lot of things. Over in the corner that you can't see too well is an ice box. Because most people didn't have uh, electric running through the house, so they had an ice box, which the ice man would come around and bring ice to the ice box. And this would what would um, the ice box would 
keep the Kool-Aid cold and keep the milk cool and keep the butter cool and it kept the flies and things off a lot of things. Another thing we have here, I'm going to see if I can bring it up a little bit better. Nope. Let me see. All right. Here, this is also part of the businesses in Goldsboro. Uh, we also had a star theater. The building is still there. It's not a theater anymore. It's just an empty building now, which we would like to um, get this building and revamp this building and open this theater back up. But we had star theater, which was all black theater. We had a state house. We had two or three state houses in Goldsboro. This is um, a hotel that we had in Goldsboro. Yeah, we had our own hotel in Goldsboro. Goldsboro was a thriving city. Goldsboro was a city that was really on the chicken circuit. We had all the stars and uh, all the singers. They always came through Goldsboro. I remember seeing, hearing about B.B. King uh, coming to Goldsboro every Friday and Saturday night. All right, here was the social life. That was the social life of Goldsboro. You had the teachers and the business owners and, and, um, and the professional people that would uh, get together in their clubs and they would have, uh, they would have meetings, they would have dinners. This is early life in Goldsboro before the projects. Now, I'll tell you a couple of stories about Goldsboro. Now, I know most of you heard the Jackie Robinson story. And you've heard the Jackie Robinson story as written and as told by some other people. But in Sanford, we tell the real story of Jackie Robinson. We tell the real story of what happened to Jackie that day that he was uh, pulled out of the dugout. Now, if you can see this, this man here, name is Mr. Brock. In the movie 42, he was played by a younger man, and he was played by a, a man that was not so heavy as Mr. Brock. Mr. Brock was considered at the time like the mayor of Sanford, the black mayor of Sanford. And when Jackie Robinson was supposed to have played his first game in Sanford, the Ku Klux Klan had gathered across the street and said that he was not going to play on that field. Well, at the time, the chief of police was Chief Williams. And Chief Williams, they called Chief Williams, said, get that boy off the field because if we have to go and get him, we're not going to be as nice. So Chief Williams went to the dugout and got Jackie Robinson out of the dugout walked him out of the, off the field into the car. Well, there were some young black boys that was watching through what we call the knot hole. They were the knot hole game. The knot hole game is a completely different um, story. I have to tell you the story about the knot hole game. But um, they ran to Mr. Brock, these three boys, they ran to Mr. Brock and said, Mr. Brock, the, 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 the chief got Jackie Robinson, the chief got Jackie Robinson. And if you notice here, he has his hand to his side because they say he always talked with his hand. He had his other hand in his pocket, which they all say he always kept a gun in his pocket. And in, the, in his talking, the story went that Mr. Mr. Brock told these three boys, go tell Chief William to bring that boy to my house, talking about Jackie Robinson, and I don't want a hair on his head touched. Well, those boys ran and told Chief William what Mr. Brock had said. This is, this is the house that Mr. Brock lived in. In 42, in the movie 42, it did the house justice. It was a very nice house in, in, in the movie 42. And Mr. Brock lived in a nice house. This was his wife, Miss Brock. This, the house is still standing in Sanford, the house that, uh, that they brought Jackie Robinson to. In the movie 42, they had Jackie Robinson leaving the house in the middle of the night. But no, they waited till, until the next day and took Jackie Robinson and his friend to, um, 
Daytona the next day. And that's our story, Jackie Robinson. Also in Sanford, we have the Goldsboro Welcome Center. And the Goldsboro Welcome Center, the Goldsboro Welcome Center is, uh, is a cultural art building that we have in Goldsboro where we have meetings. We have meetings. We have um, uh, the home of the Trayvon Martin Memorial. We have um, a community garden in the back. We got a small amphitheater in the back. And so our Welcome Center, we're able to do a lot of things in our Welcome Center. And if you're ever in, uh, ever in Goldsboro or in Sanford, come visit us at the Welcome Center. Uh-oh. <laughs> I need to change the next one. Another slide for, of the Welcome Center. Now this is, a, this is the way the street, 13th Street looked before we changed the name. This is a ceremony where the name of the street, which was given back in 1911 to Goldsboro as 13th Street, and it had been there for 100 years. It had been 13th Street for 100 years to commemorate the 100th year in 1911, I mean 2011, it was 100 years, we petitioned the city to change the name back from 13th Street to Goldsboro, historic Goldsboro Boulevard. And the city agreed. And this is the ceremony where we changed the street here where the chairs are in the road, changed it back from 13th Street to historic Goldsboro Boulevard. The man standing up against the sign is our mayor, Mayor Jeff Trippett. And that's the sign where it was changed from 13th Street to Historic Goldsboro Boulevard. Velma Williams is our commissioner. She is the only elected official in Sanford and in Seminole County. And we told you about the uh, the Welcome Center, this is an outside picture of the Welcome Center and the Trayvon Martin Memorial. In the corner is the Trayvon Martin Memorial and if you are ever in the Goldsboro or Sanford area, please stop by. We have visitors that come every day to the Goldsboro Welcome Center and to view the Trayvon Martin Memorial. We have busloads of people that come in to review the Trayvon Martin Memorial. The Goldsboro Museum, Francis Oliver Cultural Arts Center, and the Croons Academy Museum celebrates black history 365 days a year. We are located at 1211 Historic Goldsboro Boulevard in Sanford, Florida. You can reach us by email at goldsboromuseumgmail.com. Our website is goldsboromuseum.com. And please like us on Facebook. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I have a. I was reading about the um, the mayor of mm -hmm. of uh, Sanford at the time when he went to Tallahassee mm -hmm. and did the annex change. Mm -hmm. Now. When he came back, he was in, he was um, arrested because he was a banker. Yes, and he and, got him for bank fraud. And he served uh, a few years. In prison. He appealed it, uh -huh. got out, and then went back to uh, finish his sentence. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, from what I read, he lived the life of a pauper. That's right. And died on the streets. He died on the streets. Of and Stanford. he's he's buried in the um, I think it's the the cavalry yeah. or the, the cemetery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the cemetery, uh-huh. And also another thing about Mr. Forrest Lake, I don't, it's called New Tribe Mission now, but he built that hotel at the time in Sanford, it was called uh, the Mayfair Inn Hotel. He built that hotel, and uh, he was also uh, responsible for the, the uh, 
uh, incorporation of Seminole County, yep. Seminole County, which Seminole County came much later than uh, than Goldsboro or Sanford. Sanford was incorporated in in um, in 1897, I believe it was in 18 no no, Sanford was 1817. Was it 17? Anyway, there are 14 years different between the two. My math may 19, be a, 1917. Uh, 1917. Okay, my math might be a little rusty, <laughs> but it was uh, it was like 14 different 14 years difference between the incorporation of Sanford and the incorporation of Goldsboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and like I said, Seminole County celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2013. When Goldsboro celebrated their 100th anniversary in 2011. Do you think that Goldsboro could ever become larger than it is now? Where it it could... has grown. It has grown a lot. Goldsboro has grown. Goldsboro has grown a lot from where it first came from. Okay, um, it has uh, it has incorporated within Goldsboro what some people at one time called Lockhart. But I couldn't find any place where that settlement was called Lockhart. As a matter of fact, that settlement was more part of um, of um, Greatville. It was a settlement of white Jewish people that was lived off of Greatville, and that settlement was called Greatville out there. But um, but San but Goldsboro not incorporate most of that. So it has grown a lot because during the time when they were incorporated city. It only went up to um, 16th Street on the south, and up to I think it was 9th on the north, on the north, because um, past 9th was mostly just woods and all. That's most of where the projects were built too in that area. It didn't take up any of that where the project was built. Uh huh. Did the celery industry take off because? You were in competition with North Carolina? No, the celery industry in Sanford took off because a freeze came in 1925 and froze all the orange groves. And when, and when they froze all the orange, because before 1925, there were no celery in Sanford, okay? And, uh, and so the growers had to do something. They had to do something to make a living because it takes... I don't know how many years for orange trees to start to produce oranges again. So they did visit other places and found out what they could plant that they could uh, that they could make money within so many months and things. And, and celery and gladiolus flowers were two things that they planted. So those were mainly two things in Sanford that um, that brought Sanford back, and that's how Sanford got to be the celery cap Sarah city. Uh, Sarah capital of Florida. Wow. Now, if if Sanford was to let's say give Goldsboro its own identity again, and say you became a, a incorporated city again, mm -hmm. what would be the major attraction to to lure investors to come back to to Goldsboro? Well, number one, I don't think that would never happen, <laughs> <laughs> but. The community of Goldsboro, now that the five housing projects are gone, there's not any more housing projects there, the community of Goldsboro is getting ready to rise to its, its potentials that the founding fathers had for Goldsboro when Goldsboro was incorporated. Okay, they never meant for Goldsboro to be the ghetto. So Goldsboro is getting ready to get rid of that stigma as a... Uh, the stepchild of Sanford or the stepchild of Seminole County. As a matter of fact, Streetscape is getting ready to come on Gold's, historic Goldsboro Boulevard. And Streetscape will make Goldsboro Boulevard look like most of the streets in downtown Sanford. Also, the, um, the auto train is getting ready to, to expand and make it possible for, for better transportation and getting to the auto train from the airport. So there is going to be a new, um, I guess, a, a new thoroughway cut through that's going to come right through Goldsboro. Okay, now that the housing projects are gone, there are going to be 
new subdivision built in Goldsboro, not low income subdivision. Subdivision is my understanding that will start at the houses at 150,000 up, okay? Which at one time in Goldsboro, uh, those were the high end houses, you know, the million dollar houses and the, and the 500,000 and all that, they weren't built nowhere in Sanford, okay? So Goldsboro is going to elevate the economics of Sanford. Is Crooms Academy one of the focal points to attracting more and more talent to Goldsboro? Yes, yes. Crooms Academy, hopefully, if you've been listening to Obama talk about uh, the two-year programs that's going to be free for, uh, for, for students, that you won't have to go into debt for the rest of your life for a two-year college degree, well, Crooms Academy will be one of those schools that you'll be able to, to get your AA degree from Crooms Academy. And right now, it's a, it's a, it's a um, school of um, technology. But, and I don't know, they haven't told us the date yet or the year that they'll start, but it is planned, and the plan is to move it into a two-year uh, academic. Now, we, that is one of our feeder schools. Yes. We're, we're um, tied to that school. Uh -huh. We go to their benefits. I think we have a scholarship for them. Uh-huh, scholarship fund, uh-huh. What would, um, would it benefit Goldsboro or Sanford to maybe build a college or attract a new college? You have UCF down And we also have Seminole State, too. Yes. Seminole State. And I don't know what's the, um, since we don't have Seminole State anymore, I think this is why the two-year uh, the two-year plan is coming to Crooms, mm -hmm. which eventually one day it may be a four a, a four-year institution to be able to get a four-year degree in technology from Crooms, and then we have other schools there that are magnet schools too, which are doing very well uh, as far as um, as far as what they're producing. We have some of the best magnet schools there for uh, entertainment, I guess you call it entertainment. They team up with Disney World and with Universal Studios. And, uh, and also we have one school that actually teams up with the Space Center. It's a magnet school. And so the Space Center is really like you are with uh, Crooms. This is the way they are with the Space Center. And the uh, Disney World and Universal Studios with uh, semi with uh, Lyman High School, I think, is Lyman High School in Seminole County. Mm -hmm. Is there an adult education um, facility in Goldsboro? No, uh-uh. And the reason there isn't, they had several of them. But now it's my understanding that you have to get your GED online. In okay. fact, Seminole State doesn't have a GED program anymore. It's my understanding. You go out there and you register for your online courses, but you really take your courses online. Interesting. Interesting. Well, in closing, do you have any any thoughts or hopes for the next five years? Um, a way to enhance everyone's knowledge of Goldsboro. Okay. Because we're going to share this video, and we're going to we're going to work with you to you know help you get on your feed and okay. make sure everything is is stick. Because you're already successful. We, we're hoping to add to it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And that's what we're hoping for in Goldsboro. The Goldsboro Museum was opened in uh, 2011, and our, um, and our association, uh, Goldsboro, uh, is called um, Goldsboro West Side uh, Historical Association. We're the ones that uh, got together and with the sale of this book, this is the, one of the books that I wrote, with the sale of this book called The Struggles of Sanford and Goldsboro, we were able to raise enough money to get our 5013C. And from there, we, um, we have been blessed to keep for three years now to keep the doors open with not very much help. But in the future, what we're planning for in the future, we would like to have a building. We would like to get out of the trailer, uh, the trailer that we're in. We also would like to see our museum with more protection 
than what we have in the museum. Like for all our artifacts and all our uh, all our uh, documents and pictures and things like this, some type of protection where if there's a fire or a hurricane, because sometimes water can do as much damage as fire, their hurricane we are protected there. Also our welcome center, as a matter of fact, our whole strip, we are hoping to become the cultural arts center of Sanford. Now you're down the street from the police station. Yes. Which is a I think it's a $20 million $20 building. $20 million building. We fought hard to get that building there. Okay. Now, and you might say, well, why did you fight to get a police and fire? It's a, it's a safety complex, okay? It's more of a safety complex than it is a police station, and it's not a jail either, which some people think is a jail. It's not a jail. It's a safety complex. We fought to get that building there, too. At the time, we had nothing new had been built in Goldsboro in over 50 years. So getting that police station there sort of elevated at that time when we were get, trying to get it there, elevated um, the appearance of Goldsboro because it did put the bright lights and, you know, all of the nice trees coming into Goldsboro. So it gave Goldsboro a facelift, and this is what we, was, this is what we wanted, the reason we fought to get the police station there. And who is... Are you the only one that's working to enhance the theater? Because that theater is going to, could be a focal point and to attract is, more and more right. talent. That's uh, right. Right now, it's about three of us working to try to get that theater. Uh, Commissioner Velma Williams is working on it. She's like I said before, she's our um, only black elected official in Sanford or in Seminole County. She's helping and. Um, and I think that we're getting a little help. In fact, I know we're getting some help from City Hall. Once we get the building, we can get some help from City Hall. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we appreciate, appreciate you coming and celebrating Black History Month with us. Uh -huh. And if you have any words in closing, um, we'd like to see you here again maybe next year. Yes. Or the end of the year for and maybe a follow -up. next year we'll have some updates yes on how streetscape is coming because it's supposed to start any time now the streetscape they told me back before thanksgiving that they would be starting within six months so we're getting close to that date and i can tell we're getting closer because of the the, the people that's coming in the community and all the surveyors and all this kind of stuff so we're getting close and the beautification of sanford is Corresponding with the beautification of Goldsboro. Goldsboro, yeah. It's almost like uh, I can't pull you up by your bootstrap without pulling the ones holding on to your pants up too. Mm -hmm. So we're holding on to we're holding on to Sanford so that we can also, um, as Maya Angelou said, rise also. Thank you very much.